Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I hope you all are doing so well. I am totally fighting with Facebook today. I've been trying to um, get the live stream going for the last few minutes. So I decided I would just go ahead and use Zoom to come into the group um, because the regular um, production just doesn't seem to want to work. So anyway, you know what we do when Facebook gives you lemons, we make a delicious lemonade mojito or something like that, right? So anyway, if you are tuning in live right now, I would love for you to introduce yourself. Tell me where you are tuning in from. If you're watching this on the replay, go ahead and hit hashtag replay so that we know that you are following up at a later time. And we're so glad to be with you today. I'm so excited to be with you today. And this is a topic that is certainly really near and dear to my heart, talking about how to nurture your team, how to prioritize morale building efforts. Um, hey, Tanya. Hi, Tammy. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. Facebook is being kind of snarky, so that's why I decided to do it on Zoom. You may or may not have uh, seen. And yes, Tanya had... I think she had an incredible um, birthday. I got to visit with her last night, which was a total joy. So, and I'm so glad that you um, remembered that too, Tammy. That's so awesome. So anyway, glad you're here. Uh, and um, if you are starting to tune in now, go ahead and just comment below. Let us know who you are, what you do for a living. And if there's anything that we can do to be of help to you, um, you know, we're, we're always here for you. So in the meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into today's show. So just to kind of let you know, this month, we are really focused on this idea of nurturing, right? So nurturing yourself, right? So um, we always talk about the fact that like if you were to get on an airplane, for example, not that you're getting on an airplane right now, of course, but um, they always talk to you about the importance of putting on your oxygen mask before you put on an oxygen mask for a child or something like that. So I want to preempt this information by sharing with you the importance of your own self-care routine and putting on your own oxygen mask before you're helping to oxygenate the, the team members around you, your family, things of that nature. So that's really, really important. And I'd love to hear from you, what are some of the self-care tips that you're doing in order to help yourself to stay grounded, emotionally regulated, uh, especially as we now start to move um, from phase one into phase two? What does that look like for you? So um, some things I'll just share with you on a personal note that I have been working on to keep my myself emotionally regulated uh, is daily meditation. That's been huge. Um, I have been listening to some of my favorite podcasts, favorite authors, uh, spending a lot of time outside. You guys have probably seen a lot of the um, pictures and stuff. I have become an avid biker. We're having a lot of fun riding bikes. Sophia, my daughter's been riding her scooter. So that has been totally a blast. And uh, any, any time spent outside, I think is a great way um, so to, to nurture yourself. So see that Tammy's inviting a few more people to come in and join us. So hopefully they'll be here soon. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about how to um, nurture your team during this time because my goodness, everybody needs some extra TLC right now uh, in the world. So it's interesting too, um, because there's been this interesting shift that I feel like has happened, uh, particularly in corporate America, and then kind of shifting down into um, people who are smaller business owners. And I feel like prior to COVID-19, we were always sort of looking at employee morale um, and the human element as kind of secondary to the bottom line, right? Like that I feel like has been often the culture, uh, at least that's kind of the culture I grew up in, uh, growing up in New Jersey and then spending uh, 10 years working in corporate America in Manhattan. Um, unfortunately, uh, the messages that we often got were toughen up, you know, push through it you know, work harder. Um, and that message, gratefully, one of the blessings I think coming out of this whole pandemic is understanding the importance of self-care, the importance of nurturing yourself, the importance of mental health. So this month, we are really focused on these topics because this is what it's all about, you guys. If you don't have your own mental health, 
within you, how could you possibly be there for your team and your family, right? So these are just important things that I want you to start considering. And so now the human element of the workforce needs to be bumped to a top priority. The bottom line is, is if your team is not healthy, they're not mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically healthy, then your bottom line is going to ultimately suffer. So putting things in place now, uh, continuing to do that is, is really top and really important and really key. So if that makes sense, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, something to that effect. So there are um, a few core practices, um, just some things that I'm gonna share with you as examples. Um, and then I'm going to give you five other ways that you can boost employee morale during this pandemic, okay? So um, the first thing, and you, you may have already be, been doing this, right? So creating a consistent schedule of virtual team meetings to ensure that everybody's being looped in on updates, expectations, and next steps. We all work better, okay? And, and if you're a parent or you're a dog owner, you'll probably appreciate this especially, but consistency, right? Consistency is huge, right? Like, so how are you showing up? And are people understanding that there's a consistency of team meetings that happens every week? Now, when you're having these meetings, I would like to suggest to you that it's not the meeting that goes on for 17 years uh, and that there is a specific agenda that you put together and that you get out to your team ahead of time. So your meetings ha are task oriented. People understand clearly what the expectations are from the meeting, then after the meeting, they understand what they need to do moving forward, right? And so as we shift from being virtual, hopefully a lot of us starting to get back to bricks and mortar, I want to encourage you to consider continuing this meeting process. I actually have a client um, and we've been talking a lot about putting um, these consistent meetings on her books departmentally. Um, she um, is in the, the medical field and having these meetings on a weekly basis where there is a specific agenda is a very important part of cutting down on the just people popping over, people popping over and interrupting you when you're working, right? And that can be really challenging because if people are always interrupting you, how are you ever getting anything done? So first thing is creating a consistent schedule that happens that everybody's being looped in. And that's hard to do right now too, to make sure everybody's being looped in um, because especially if you have people working in different places, okay? So that's one. If that's making sense, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. So additionally, you should be creating a schedule where you're having a one-on-one -on -one check in with each of your team members. This is gonna give people the opportunity to address personal concerns in private with you. It's about creating a safe space for people to feel like they can unpack an emotional backpack, right? So sometimes when we're a business owner, not only are we playing this role of um, you know, uh, selling widgets, right? But we play a little bit of the role of psychologist. So this is where you need to put on your emotional regulation. I'm not going to get triggered hat. And you just stay in a place where you can just be a great active listener. Active listening means you do not talk. Active listening means you do nothing but listen. We always say that God gave us two ears and one mouth for a particular reason. <laughs> um, I'd like you to also consider creating virtual or socially distanced opportunities for staff to connect and feel a sense of workplace community. We all know that people are really challenged right now with feeling like uh, this social distance thing has been very challenging, right? So create opportunities for people to connect and we can have some fun with it, right? And this is outside of what those regular meetings are. So maybe that's everybody's bringing a picture of their dog or they're talking about their kids and how they're working on homeschooling or how they're managing work-life balance, you know, trying to work while, you know, having their, their child with them, right? we're all kind of experiencing these different things and none of us is alone that we are experiencing them. Um, I wanna encourage you to really, again, work on your own emotional regulation so that you can operate with a higher level of compassion, kindness, and space for that act of listening. This is key to really creating uh, that ongoing connection with your, your staff. 
And um, so that's just kind of a couple of core practices that I want you to be in consideration of. And then I'm gonna kind of talk to you about some employee morale boosting techniques now. This is the next part. Mm. Okay, so, um, so basically, so talking about these virtual or social distance opportunities, um, what we're gonna call virtual team bonding, okay? So maybe you, I wanna give you guys a couple of more ideas. So it might be a team lunch. You could have a happy hour. Um, so also I would like you to maybe allocate the first five minutes of your weekly team meeting to something that feels lighter where people can connect. So it might be a book suggestion, something of that nature. Um, the next thing is employee milestone celebrations. So um, I want you to make sure that whether it is a birthday or a work anniversary, a personal accomplishment, recognizing people, um, holding virtual events, recognition is extremely important as well. Okay. Um, additionally, let's kind of continue talking about other things that can work for, for you and your team. Um, I have seen some people implementing these walk and talk meetings. Um, and since obviously we've had the gyms closed and fitness centers closed and stuff like that, people are, are working remotely more and we need physical um, activity. This is incredibly important to get out and move your body, right? So to encourage your employees to stay active, take a break from working inside. Maybe you have them take conference calls that don't require sitting in front of the screen uh, and that they could be walking outdoors, right? And so we call it a walk and talk meeting <laughs> and you can stroll around the neighborhood, a park, or just a change of scenery service for some fresh air. Okay. So I want you to encourage people to be doing this. Um, additionally, wellness resources, right? So a lot of elevated stress, panic, things of that nature for people are happening. Um, so mental wellness, providing people, your staff with proper COVID-19 resources. So it might be helping them. You might want to send out, think about sending out an employee email where there's articles related to stress relief, or maybe you host a virtual meditation session. Um, you can help your employees really avoid feeling that isolation. So I want you to think about, um, you can even Google it. There's a lot of the big companies that are recommending and, and, and sharing with people what they are doing, whether it's you know bringing in somebody to teach the meditation, like I was saying, or it's yoga classes, or it's um, all these wellness things. This is gonna be really important to, to helping, again, your team to kind of um, move, move through what's happening in the world. So finally, the last point I wanna make um, is considering the financial and employment needs of your staff. Again, um, with things being so, so crazy in the world, I want you to think about making sure that you're communicating regularly regarding the financial stability of your company. And you have to be careful to sort of balance the need for reassurance with helping people prepare for reality. The reality is that a lot of people, a lot of businesses are really suffering during this time. And people not knowing whether or not they're going to have a job, potentially, um, if you're not communicating about that, can feel very stressful for people. So in a way that feels in alignment for you in your business, you need to be regularly communicating with people so that they understand where your company is at from a financial stability, where they're at with their position. Um, and I want you to consider what other creative measures you can take to keep your employees financially stable. Do you need to bring in a financial advisor to help them, you know, think about risk versus, you know, what financial options they have? Um, do you need to provide assistance to people if you cannot keep them employed? You know, do you bring somebody in to help them to revamp their resume, um, their LinkedIn profile? Um, if you need any help with that, we've got excellent resources here at Full Pocket um, if people need to look for an, another um, opportunity. So um, just a couple things for you to be considering uh, as, um, you know, we're keeping people up and joyful. Um, and remember, again, this all hinges on you. At the end of the day, if you are not taking care of yourself, if you're not emotionally regulating, if you're not scheduling the time and taking the time for self-care, then it's very, very hard 
to ask people to do it if you're not. We have to lead by example. We have to take good care of ourselves for us and our family, and then we can implement these things for our team. So let me just quickly recap everything that I shared with you. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, everybody who's tuning in. Thank you for those people watching on the replay. So morale, top of mind right now has got to be a top priority. What's consistency, scheduling these meetings, checking in one-on-one -on -one with people, um, creating socially distanced opportunities for staff to connect, huge. Um, making sure that you are still celebrating milestones for people. Um, oh, and one other thing, maybe you do a company-wide contest. I forgot about that one. Everybody likes a friendly competition. Um, and I'm seeing some companies using Slack um, or whatever you have to do um, a company-wide contest. So that's actually another thing that I forgot to tell you guys about. So that's another idea. We have walk and talk meetings, um, and wellness resources, and then financial needs. So hopefully this is resonating for you. Hopefully this is helpful to you. As always, we are here for you to help you uh, whatever it is that your business is needing in order to get to that next level. Uh, oftentimes it's lonely at the top especially during COVID-19, where you feel like there's not nobody, there's no objective person to really help you to think through what you need to do and where you need to go next. So if you are finding yourself in a situation where you're a little unsure, maybe you're feeling some fear, you're not sure how to move through it, how um, to make money during this time and, and really serve at the top level, reach out for me. I'm here for all of you. We'd love to be of help to you and um, really appreciate you being a part of this group. As always, I'm wishing you health, wellness, joy, lots and lots of love. Remember, there's only two places that people create from love or fear. You get to choose. And every moment of every hour of every day, you get to make the choice and how you choose affects everybody around you. So choose love today. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and if this is resonant for you, please invite people to the group. Uh, we're always looking to, to build our membership. We appreciate you. Have a great day, everybody. And thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.